I have a feeling this will be up in July and it is the first of the May wrap-ups. So how's life treating you? Hello everybody, I'm Roxy and this is Chaotic Beagle File. Finally, I'm here to wrap up what I read for the From 1900s to 1950 Readathon, which was hosted by Katie from Books and Things. I'm going to link her channel down below so you can check out her wrap up. I think it's a one time only sort of readathon because she plans to host a different readathon in May every single year. So I think next year is going to be historical fiction. I'll see if I can participate as well. But yeah, I was so excited for this readathon because this is literally my favorite period in literature. It is the period I have chosen to focus on for the next year. Yeah, very excited. I didn't finish a lot of things. I am in the middle of a lot of things that are from the period, a lot of anthologies and big books. So bear that in mind. However, I did complete all the challenges, which makes me very happy. The first challenge was read something from your own country. For that, I read this by Maria Luisa Bombal. Now, I looked up the titles in English because this is translated. I will put the names when pertinent. This is a bind up of a novella and a short story collection. The novella in Spanish is called La Mortajada, which in English is this. And the short story collection is called La Ultima Niebla, which in English is this. In case you don't know, Maria Luisa Bombal was a 20th century author and she was just the bomb. She was a complete rebel in terms of sexuality. She was the first to write a female orgasm in Latin American literature. That is a fact that I learned from someone who listens to our podcast in Spanish. She also inspired other writers that would later become the epitome of magical realist authors. So there is magical realism here, although it's not called that. You can feel it. It is not, by the way, none of these are House of Mist, which yes, is a reference to House of Mirth, which is sort of the English version of one of the stories here, the title story, La Ultima Niebla. She started translating it herself and it became a different story. So in the end, House of Mist is a novel in and of itself and it's actually being translated into Spanish, which I find amazing and hilarious. As I said, Maria Luisa Bombal was unique for her time. And you can definitely see her influence on authors such as early Isabel Allende and Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And actually one of the stories here, the novella one, La Mortajada, was a strong inspiration for Juan Rulfo's Pedro Paramo. So there you go. That story is about a woman who has just died and she is conscious while the funerary rites are occurring. Can you say funerary in English? Burial rites? Things are happening around her and she starts thinking back as people visit her. And it's very intense, it's very shocking and it's beautifully written. All the other stories are about women and nature and specifically the title story of La Ultima Niebla, which is called this in English, is about a woman who is dissatisfied with her marriage and finds a lover, or maybe she doesn't, who knows what's going on. I enjoyed these stories. I didn't love the way they were written. I think they are very old timey and they are very romance focused. I mean, I can see they are revolutionary for the time that they were written, but personally, not my favorite, but objectively a really good book. And I think if you like Victorian literature and want to try translated fiction, I think this. For the second challenge from a different country, I could have read so many different things, but I will talk about Snow Country by Yasunari Kawabata. This was translated from the Japanese by Juan Form. This was my first, no, that's a lie. This is my second Kawabata because my first one was actually the master of Go, but I don't count that because it, although it is fiction, it is sort of, well, not auto fiction, but it's like heavily inspired by something that Kawabata was actually reporting on. So it's sort of creative nonfiction. Yeah, I didn't love this. I was very disappointed, but there's still something here because I 
haven't given this away. I'm going to keep it for now because I think I might want to revisit it. I'm not sure, but I might. So this is about Shimamaru who goes to the snow country every once in a while to visit Komako, who is a geisha. And on the visit that opens the story, he sees a young woman he then will also become involved not necessarily romantically with her but it's very confusing and it's all about loneliness and human connection kawabata is a good writer of course this will also pop up by the way in my springathon wrap up because i read it for that as well and the thing is that i think my review will be more positive there because focusing on the nature things beautiful writing i loved it but i couldn't stand shimamaru and i think the plot suffered because he's such a an obvious character <sighs> it's not great female representation by the way i badly read this with natalie from curious reader link to her channel down below and i kept telling her that for me it would depend on what light Shimamaru was painted under because if he was rewarded or if the women suffered more than he, the author condoned his actions. More than his actions because he's a pretty passive character, but his thought, he's very derisive, but not in an interesting way, you know? He feels superior, but at the same time you see that he is hiding an inferiority complex. The way it was written didn't make me want to care, it didn't make me excuse it, because I can read about pretty despicable characters, and my prime example right now is the guys from The Corrections. The men there, ugh, hated them all, and some of the women too, but especially the men. But the way they were written was so interesting, I couldn't stop reading. And what happened at the end made me realize what Franzen was doing. But in here, it seemed like Shimamaru was this poor, beautiful soul, and the women were even less great, inferior souls. And again, loneliness and fail of connection are all themes that I love, but yeah, I didn't cut it from me. I'm going to link specifically Natalie's wrapping up of this because she explained it much better than I did. And my final verdict for now is that I'm good with Kawabata for now. Like, I own one more book by him and I would read it, but I can sense the mood isn't going to strike anytime soon. And there are so many books that I want to read that, yeah, I'm not going to revisit him in a while. Next is a genre classic and for that i read flush by virginia wolf this is a little beautiful penguin black classic edition which i thoroughly recommend this is historical fiction about elizabeth barrett browning's spaniel and it's narrated through free indirect style so it's still third person so it's not first person narrative but it's narrated from his perspective it's brilliant like everything virginia wolf does it still has a sense of humor which i love i feel like i really got to know elizabeth barrett browning and although i know who she was i don't know tons about her but i feel like i got a pretty good sense of her character and maybe I'm wrong because of course this is fiction but I feel like I received what was transmitted about her whether that was the actual case or it's mostly fiction that's something else but really love it really recommend it and I actually think it's a good place to start with Virginia Wolf if you don't want to commit to a full novel because it's just like one perspective and it's so adorable that the style that you may be intimidated by flies below the radar a little bit like it fools you into thinking this is easier than it might actually be so i just loved it so good the next thing is something that isn't a novel and for that i'm going to talk about miss brill by katherine mansfield these are three short stories miss brill marriage a la mode and the stranger it's my first time reading katherine mansfield and i'm definitely going to read more i think these stories are good i enjoyed especially Marichella Mode, I thought it was very interesting. They are all about, you know, families and strange relationships. I enjoy them. I don't think they were super memorable, but they are not her most famous because her most famous are the ones in like Garden Party. I think that's the most famous one. So I don't know if I would recommend you start here, especially because I know you can buy this edition, which is the modern English penguin library something along those lines, maybe ordered in a different way. <laughs> yeah, I think you could invest in that one. It's still not that big an investment and you'd get more stories that way. But this was fun and I definitely want to read more by this author. She has this very snappy modern style that is not 
modernistic tackly, although it does use some modernist techniques. So maybe along the lines of Edith Wharton and Kate Chopin. So yeah, that sort of vibe. Something that explores World War One or World War Two. If you know me, you know I'm not big on war. I mean, I don't think anyone's big on war, although I, I don't appreciate war media in general. Like, that's not my jam. However, I did have this book of poetry because I have the whole Penguin Little Black Classics box set, which comes with the first 80. And this is number 50. It's Anthem for Doomed Youth by Wilfred Owen. There are two reasons I deeply enjoy the poems in here. Of course, Wilfred Owen is one of the most famous World War I poets. The first reason is that the poetry is excellent. I definitely want to read more by him. And the second is that it's critical of World War I. So of course I enjoyed the bitterness and the screw you attitude. And you don't know how, what we've been through. So don't glorify this shit, which he puts more beautifully, but that's the gist. And that's the sentiment I completely get behind. So if you want to try him, I really recommend this. I had read a couple of poems from here before for class. Really recommend this little class collection, really loved it, and I'm going to read more. If you know, I mean, I know other war poets, but if you know of war poets specifically that are as hateful towards war as Wilfred Owen, send them my way. Those were all the problems, but there was the bonus challenge of reading a book from every decade, and I actually accomplished that with one single book, and that is Robert Balter's Lo Mejor Que Se Decir Sobre La Música. Now, here's the thing. This collection in particular is not translated into English, but Robert Walter is translated into English. The New York Review of Books actually has a lot of his stories. These are all stories that have to do with music, which is why I picked them up specifically. In case you don't know, Robert Walter is a German language author who... Excuse me, sir, I'm doing something here. It worked! No, it didn't. It was a joke, by the way. You know, I can work with a lot of noise around me. I'm used to it. Anyway, Robert Balser was this 20th century, I mean, turn of the century, but he published a lot of stories during the first few decades of the 20th century. And he wrote poetry, but he mostly wrote flash fiction, what we would now consider flash fiction or like details or even prose poetry. I think you could also consider these prose poetry. He didn't care if it was fiction and fiction reflections, he just wrote. But he was able to capture through language very beautifully these moments and these stories and these notions. So reading him is a treat. I don't think he's for everybody. He's definitely, from what I know, or at least in Spanish, a reader's author like and a writer's author as well but like you know someone is like a really serious classic especially german lead reader if they read robert walter which is actually how i got to know him because one bookseller that sadly isn't around anymore but he ran a bookshop that i visited quite often and he told me about walter at the beginning and i have another collection by him that is actually i think a collection that he published as a collection but this is a selection and i haven't credited the translator i'm sorry translated by rosa pilar blanco edited by roman brodbeck and Helgia or Gelgia Kaviesel. Kaviesel. This was actually compiled first in German. It's called Das Beste, was ich über Musik zu sagen weiß. I know people whose native language is German watch me, so I, I apologize. I'm so sorry, but um, yeah, I know this is not translated in this format in English, but again, you can find a lot of other stories in English either way. There is a story for each decade, at least. They are a lot of stories and I love them. The poetry, not so much. Some of it I liked, but I definitely think the stories were his strong suit. And I really recommend Walter if you like microfiction, prose poetry, flash fiction, that sort of thing, details. If you think of authors painting with words, maybe even if you like haikus, you might like this, yeah. Good. And the last book I read for this challenge was The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis, which is, I think, the first published book from the Chronicles of Narnia, and it's the second in chronological order. I have these beautiful hardcover editions that I bought as part of a box set, and they are illustrated. In case you don't know what this is about, you may not. This is about three orphan brothers 
who go to live with their crazy uncle and there is this wardrobe that takes them to a magical place called Narnia where the evil witch is raining and they of course need to save it. It is very religiously influenced, it is very allegorical, it's very obvious, but it's so very fun. I think I mentioned that I love C.S. Lewis because it feels like a grandfather telling you a story before bed. You know, sometimes that's what you want. I'm really looking forward to continuing on with the series. I mean, I have read most of the books. I don't remember which ones I haven't, but I'm going to read them all except The Horse and His Boy, which is the one that I read most recently before this one, and I despised it, so I'm never touching that again. The only reason I'm not getting rid of that book is because it's part of the box set, but yeah, it, it sucks. But all the others that I've read, I've enjoyed. So recommend it if you are in need of something light and fun, but still well written, which is the main point. I think that's all that I read for the 1900s to 1950s readathon. I hope you enjoyed this video if you liked it please give a thumbs up please subscribe and comment did you participate and what did you read if you didn't participate just tell me which of these books you've read or want to read any and all thoughts can go down below and that's it see you next time for the rest of the may wrap-ups in july i hope july imagine this is in august and i'm like here like a crazy person saying july i hope it's in july any and all through... Ah.